Forbidden West, the massive open world sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, and they managed to improve on almost every single thing they did in the first game. Except one thing. Why do they insist on having no way for me to block? Welcome to completion number 63 of the never ending potato backlog project. Just kidding. Only 368 more games to go. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the life finds a way tater raider and let's chat about Aloy and the Forbidden West. Forbidden West is massive in everything it's trying to do as a story, as a video game, as a playable emotional experience for gamers. It does so many things right that lots of sequels get wrong. Not having the character need to relearn skills you unlocked in the first game is always such a massive win and time saver. No one wants to play the first few hours just to unlock the exact same things they did in the first game. Mounting machines, slowing down time in midair, leaping off machines to attack, all those little things unlocked right off the bat. The game drastically improved its item and resource management systems all the way around. This made resource rarity important while collecting and it helped it stand out much better when compared to Zero Dawn. Weapons and armor felt more unique and stopping in at the different vendors actually mattered in this game. I felt like I might miss something if I didn't just shop around a little bit. All of these improvements, but I still can't block incoming attacks. The combat system itself was expanded upon. They added multiple new melee combo paths to unlock, an energy boost that you can earn through successful melee hits that kind of places a blue orb on the bad guy. You then shoot Shoot the orb for a massive damage boost explosion. This encourages you to fight well and really learn the game's system so you can capitalize on all it has to offer. Your focus breaks machine weaknesses down even further in Forbidden West. The analysis is pieced out to different parts of the creatures. It really helped to build even more depth to the machine battles, which were already pretty fun to figure out and navigate from the first game. I'm focusing more on the combat systems with this video because it's what you do for the largest part of the game. There is exploring and heavy story, lots of different quest types and collectibles, but the main the potatoes of the game loop and the real fun of the game is in the combat. That's why it's so damn baffling to me that they still choose to not give Aloy more options to defend herself properly. I was able to adapt again and not let it bother me too much. It probably helped that I completed Zero Dawn right before playing Forbidden West, but in the later game there are a lot of enemies with big area damage effects, massive range knockdown effects, big stun attacks. But without proper tools these things absolutely bog down the flow of fighting. With no way to quick recover in the air and the only evasion moves we have is to jump or dodge you get thrown around and knocked down a ton for me this made it feel like it narrowed down my options when approaching fights because i had to avoid those attacks specifically with very few options to do so having less options in games as lengthy as this is what makes them start to feel like a slog they start to feel grindy and fighting overall becomes less fun which can be a bad thing where the fighting is the main loop of your game and it's not a skill issue or a difficulty thing the difficulty of the fights is already built in with the machine armors the multi-piece limb weaknesses and strengths, machines roaming in herds, super quick movement abilities, and they also have giant guns in some cases. Running around and then dodge, dodge, dodge is what becomes a little lame. If we had something like block, parry, backflips, I don't know, maybe even swinging around a little more freely with a grapple hook. Something to up the defense and add a little bit of spice. It's a real shame to me and a massive missed opportunity, especially with the massively upgraded skill system in this game. They went really deep with not only larger skill trees, they added more types of skill trees this time around. Each tree also contains a couple super moves that you can unlock to use during battle. For example, there's one that boosts range damage for a short time, a melee damage boost, critical hit upgrades, healing help. These run off a meter that you can build through combat itself, and they add that extra spice you need in those larger, longer, more epic fights. I definitely enjoyed experimenting with them, and I'm a big fan of these types of things, as it offers players ways to boost their chosen way of playing. If you only liked range, you can choose to be stronger in that. Melee only, you can build towards that. The strongest stuff in the game mixes both, but the game doesn't hurt you for not choosing a certain way to play it, which is a good thing. My biggest gripe from the first game was the inability to block or parry attacks, and it remains so with Forbidden West. The game is still amazing. It's very fun. The main plot wasn't as strong for me overall as the first game. There's a kind of twist you see coming a mile away, so the build up to that feels cheap in a little bit near the end, but in contrast to that, the small storylines in between, the subplots and the characters you meet were much stronger. This go around. I highly suggest reading through the info tablets you find, listening to the data logs you come across. There is triumph and tragedy in this game. The more you give to this world, the more you get out of it. I felt more connected to this world. No longer an outcast, Aloy is the hope everyone needs. And the game does a great job of making you feel that way as you make your way through it. It is a massive game though. Massive. This is a game you can get burnt out on if you're not careful. The value here is incredible and if you like exploring, collecting, reading lore, learning 
learning about the world, you're probably looking at 100 to 150 hours to clear everything this game has to offer. I spent about 50 hours with Forbidden West and it was an incredible experience. Outside of not being able to block. I know, Jimmy, we get it. You can't block. Blah. The game does absolutely everything else you need a sequel to do. It is a classic that was kind of overshadowed by some bigger releases that came out at the same time. Also being an exclusive Hertz games like this in my eyes. So I'm very happy to see it getting a PC release this month, which allows more people to experience this amazing character and this awesome world. My gripes aside, the easiest five happy potato faces out of five. Bet you didn't see that coming. I don't know if the no blocking bothered other players as much as it did for me. There is so much more here though that's worth your time. And with how much more they developed the melee and the ranged battle systems, it just makes it must play for the action adventure fan. And I hope we get to see more of Aloy in the future. With that, the backlog project rolls on. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve it. We're on to the next one. Uh, welcome to completion number 63 of the Potato Backlog Project. I just hit the mic. Yeah. Dang it. 